many of us have heard this name of that famous composition called Canon in D, written by a German composer, Jonathan Packelbill, around the Baroque period in the late 17th century. And how many of us, no matter what level or age you are, have been dreaming to learn this song to play beautifully. Canon in D is worth learning. And today's topic, I will show you how to learn Canon in D easily. If you guys are ready, welcome back to Anna Chepikova, Concert Pianist Piano Coaching Channel, and let's do it. Welcome back to my channel, all my subscribers, all my guests of the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do click this subscribe button and that notification bell so every time I upload a new video, you will be the first to know. What does the word canon mean? The word canon is a rule. It's the law. In other words, it's something that is a very consistent, something that has a subsequence, uh, it has an order and consistency. However, in music, a canon, please don't confuse it with a canon, <laughs> the word with two N's, uh, which actually refers to a, a large caliber gun. <laughs> so, no confusion there. Canon, C-A-N-O-N, -O -N, one N is a piece in which we hear the melody, right? Then that melody gets uh, arranged, the melody gets kind of imitated, or I would even call it improvised on, right? I think Canon and Deep could be a great start to those who are looking to start learning how to improvise on the piano. Wouldn't you agree? There so, have been endless and countless like covers and um, transcriptions and variations, uh, what else, arrangements of this beloved canon in D. Uh, let's say take George Winston's one or uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra plays a beautiful um, instrumental version of canon in D and lots and lots of others. In this particular video, guys, I will show you the exact, it will be four of them, four very comprehensible, very easy enough, or some intermediate for beginners, for all kinds of levels and ages, four very wonderful arrangements that I personally recommend for you to uh, look at, look it up on Google or find on YouTube. They're simple enough for anyone to consider to look at. So please, be sure to stay till the very end of the video. I will be demonstrating concrete uh, options for you, the arrangements that I will highly recommend to you. So let's dive right in and very briefly analyze. What does Canon Indie consist of? We all know the melody, right? <laughs> Do you hear any kind of a pattern? It stays the same in Canon and D. And now, focus and listen very carefully, guys. What stays the same is the harmony. That's why it's called the Canon. Something has to remain the same. So we're playing the variations on that harmony. Let's take a look at the chords we're dealing with. Remember we talked about chords and how crucial and important to practice them? If it's written in D, now we already know it's in D major, we got D major chord going on. D major chord consists of what notes? Let's name it D, F sharp, A. As I talked about the chords in my previous lecture, we want to play them all in a row because it doesn't sound as pretty as, say, if we were to break them up, say, Look carefully, I will be naming the notes for you. Left hand will be playing D, A, D, F sharp. First chord. Analyzing the next chord. It's A major. Doesn't sound pretty that way. 
if we just were to play the whole chord as a block chord, A, C sharp, E, we're going to break it up as well. Watch me breaking that A major chord up. The notes are A, E, A again, C sharp. That's two chords. Chord number three that stays the same. It's B minor chord. Again, not too pretty when we play them in a row. One, three, five, right? Let's skip the third one. Do the B. Play it or write it down. Better yet, F sharp, D, D. Chord next one. F sharp, C sharp, F sharp. The next chord is G major. G, D, G. Then we're back to the main chord, D, A, D, F sharp, which is the major chord, and the two final ones, G major chord again, G, D, G, B, and the final one, A, E, A, C sharp. That's it. Canon and D is one of the easiest, if you think about it, to learn in a way, as long as we know our chords. So, left hand, pretty clear on, it's a sequence of chords. Right hand, guys, this is what they call a scale. <laughs> We're going down from F sharp, down D major scale, all the way down to A, then we back up two notes, B and C sharp. That's your theme. That theme being put on the top of that left hand that I showed you a few minutes ago sounds like this. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? So let's start with this arrangement number one that I'm recommending. The name of the arranger, that's not me, the name is Lee Galloway. Write it down, Lee Galloway. The name number two of the arranger that I highly recommend for you guys to look up, his name is Robert Schultz. Robert Schultz. His arrangement is absolutely beautiful and also very simple for you to uh, look at. Arrangement number three that I recommend for you guys to look up or find, this is arranged by Jim Patterson. Jim Patterson. It sounds a little different. We're all different people, all have different tastes, level of experiences, so why not try something new, right? Finally, arrangement number four. And the author of that arrangement number four is Lenny Smith. This is something that I would suggest to try out for more intermediate levels. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, enjoyed and found it a little bit helpful or a lot helpful. And of course, it's just a fraction of what Canon and D is about. That's when I come in to help you with any of your questions that you may have. If anyone is interested in one-on-one piano coaching, as usual, all my links are below this video in the description, as well as in my first commentary. So thank you so much for watching. It's been great to be here with you. Canon and D is not as hard as it seems, so your dreams do come true. That was Anna Chepikova, concert pianist, master of solo piano, internationally acclaimed pianist and piano instructor. I hope to see you very soon at my next video. Have a wonderful day, guys, and make it a musical one.